We have some interesting Activision information as well as some Elden Ring sales numbers plus a couple of other things to get into. Welcome back to another video, guys. If you enjoy daily content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We got this interesting article here from Axios that just came out last night, and it has to do with Activision and the fact that it's facing increased attrition. Now, as we know, with the Call of Duty franchise, it is pretty much the majority of what Activision makes its money off of, and it's going to be a huge franchise when it is officially acquired by Microsoft once that deal goes through. And there's lots of information out there as to what potentially Microsoft could be doing with this. We know that Call of Duty is looking to stray away from the yearly release after Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which is coming out in 2022. And then after that, thinking about taking a break from coming out with those yearly releases of the game, which I personally believe is a good thing because these games, you could give them longer than a year. There's still plenty of content for stuff to come out within the two year, three year cycle that will keep people coming back and still playing the current version of the game. Now, last Friday, there was the company's annual report and we got some information on the sales and what is going on here. So it says the three franchises, Call of Duty, Candy Crush, and Warcraft accounted for 82% of the company's revenue in 2021, up from 79% from the year before. And no other series even brought in 10% of its revenue, which is crazy to think about. All of their eggs are in those three baskets, Call of Duty, Candy Crush, and Warcraft. But I mean, they do well every single year. Call of Duty, even on an off year, where I think a lot of people didn't enjoy Vanguard or haven't been enjoying Vanguard as they have with previous Call of Duties, it's still a top seller. Then you have Candy Crush. That's just on a mobile phone. Everyone has access to it. And it's always been an extremely popular mobile phone game. And Candy Crush itself is going to be such a key factor for Microsoft and Xbox once they get this acquisition. They were definitely looking at that mobile market and thinking about the amount of revenue they're going to be making from the mobile stream now with a game like Candy Crush. And then you have Warcraft, which always does well. It has been on the decline. You've seen something like Final Fantasy 14 come up and kind of take over Warcraft as that, I guess you could say, number one MMO. And I would love to see Xbox transform World of Warcraft and just give it brand new life, maybe even put it on console. They go on here to talk about how the report stated that ongoing legal actions against the company and related media attention can be expected to have an adverse effect on their ability to attract and retain employees and has resulted in work stoppages. But when we look at their employees, they have right now reported 9,800 full-time or part-time employees by the end of 2021. And that is up from 9,500 the year before. So there is all that bad PR and everything, but they do have more employees in 2021, or they did have more employees in 2021 than they did in 2020. They also say here that it noted we have observed labor shortages, increasing competition for talent and increasing attrition, including a significantly higher turnover rate of our human resources function in 2021. Makes a ton of sense with all the stuff that was coming out, what was going on behind the scenes at Activision, Blizzard, the terrible work environment. People are going in and out of there, not wanting to work there. And then you see all that come out into the public and you're probably going to get less desirable employees applying for positions at Activision, which also could lead to that revolving door. They come in, they're not the best employees. You got to get them out of there and get somebody who can do the job better, I guess. And that's all because of the terrible work environment Activision Blizzard. So really nobody to blame but themselves. Now, within this report as well, there is another very odd thing that they acknowledge. And they say here that the company says that California law required it to add another woman on its board of directors by the end of 2021, but it failed to do that. And they're saying here that they're pretty much blaming it on the Microsoft and Xbox acquisition, specifically saying since the company's current directors would cease to continue to serve on our board of directors upon consummation of our proposed transaction with Microsoft, we were unable to conclude the process in 2021. We will be continuing our efforts to appoint a new female director. So they haven't done that yet. And they're saying it's because of the deal that came up with Microsoft to sell it to them. And I guess now they're going to continue to try to appoint a female onto the board. I'm not really sure what they're going to be doing going forward. But all this information just kind of continues to point to Activision Blizzard being in a really bad state when Microsoft has taken it over. And 
at the end of the day, like I say, a lot of people have been talking about consolidation, monopoly, all that type of stuff. And trying to kind of, I guess, turn this into more of a negative than a positive for the video game industry. But with everything that's going on here at Activision, with Call of Duty kind of falling off a little bit and their games not as desirable as they used to be, the terrible working environment, Xbox acquiring Activision Blizzard is probably one of the best things that could happen right now to the industry because we know that there is a good working environment within Microsoft and Xbox and Xbox Game Studios based off of things that people have said based off of Glassdoor. And on top of that, although they are hands off with the previous acquisitions, allowing developers to stay creative and kind of do their own thing with this acquisition, they're going to have to be more hands on and try to transfer it over to the current environment that's within Xbox Game Studios, which I think will be a welcomed thing from all of the employees there so lots of stuff going on here It'll be very interesting to see how this deal unfolds and between now and then when it is officially official and then what happens after that when microsoft and xbox can really start talking about the changes that are going to be made from the developers coming over so elden ring one of the most amazing games you could say for a lot of people i absolutely love it it is an incredible game the atmosphere the gameplay the sense of discovery in that game it is really really a great game and to nobody's surprise it is one of the best selling games that we've seen so we have some more information here on uk sales and they say here that elder ring is the biggest uk video game launched since call of duty vanguard which is huge because call of duty as we know sells a ton they say that the sales are 2.5 times that of last week's big release which is the playstation first party game horizon forbidden west and it is the biggest launch outside of call of duty and fifa since red dead redemption 2 in october 2018 which is a huge feat it's a massive accomplishment from from software and i'm sure they are very happy to see these numbers in the one week that elder ring has been out their sales are bigger than cyberpunk 2077 as well as assassin's creed valhalla from when they opened up in 2020 both had really great sales numbers now besides that we actually got some more information on the digital sales of things which is very interesting because previous to these digital sales we saw numbers about the physical sales and the majority of physical game sales for Elden Ring were on PlayStation. In fact, there was a huge discrepancy here. So this is from Christopher Dring, and he says 63% of Elden Ring's UK box sales were on PS5, with 17% on Xbox, 17% on PS4, and 3% on PC. I mean, nobody really buys physical games on PC, so that makes sense. They say here, PC and Xbox are heavily digital platforms. This is purely box sales. And a lot of people were looking at this, really throwing around these numbers and just saying, look how much... PlayStation dominated the sales of Elden Ring, and that's why developers prefer PlayStation, all that type of stuff. But they were just focusing on the physical sales of things. Now, when we go here to the digital sales of things, it's a completely different story. So it says here, digital downloads accounted for over 68% of Elden Ring sales, and Xbox and PC were the biggest digital platforms. Almost 85% of Elden Ring sales on Xbox were downloaded, and on PC, it was 73%. And for PS5 and PS4, the sales were just over 50% digital. So this paints a picture kind of the difference between, I guess, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox consoles in terms of the way that people consume media. And I think this will be very similar amongst a lot of games. Xbox is clearly the more digital platform, especially with something like the Xbox Series S with the price point added. A lot of people are going to go out and buy that and go purely digital or they'll have to go purely digital. And you have services on Xbox that incentivize you to go purely digital like xbox game pass where there's you sign up for game pass you get more discounts on games if you're within the service and just things like that make it more of an incentive to sign up plus there's things like the punch card you got like six thousand microsoft rewards points with buying elden ring digitally which allows you to go out and get free stuff with those rewards points so that makes sense that xbox is going to be the more digital platform and playstation 5 on the other hand, I think about how I interact with my PS5 is I buy everything physical on it because generally I'm buying a PlayStation 5 game. I'm going to be trading it in or selling it later to recoup some of my money because I, when I play PS5, it's for a game and then I don't go back to the PS5 for months. Like I haven't played my PS5 really since 
I'm trying to think the last game I really got into on it and I can't. Maybe it was Ratchet and Clank still. I can't think of a game after that that I've really jumped into and played. So I bought Ratchet and Clank and then I sold it after. But with Xbox, I'm going on a daily jumping into Game Pass and going through my digital catalog. So it just it makes sense these numbers to me as to why Xbox would be more digital in the sales of Elden Ring. And then overall, we take a look at the numbers and it's much closer when you put everything together in terms of the sales on all the platforms. PS5 and PS4 together accounted for 41% of the sales. PC accounted for 30% and Xbox accounted for 29% of the sales. So, hey, it's relatively close in terms of percentage sales across the different platforms. But when you split it up between physical and digital, you look at those numbers separately, it's a much bigger gap. All right, let's talk about Japan and Xbox and the amount of stuff that they've sold over there, at least the amount of consoles they sold over there in the last 20 years. And there is a new report that has come out saying that Japan has bought 2.3 million Xbox consoles in the last 20 years. Now, that's not a huge number for 20 years of sales, but for Xbox in the region there, it is pretty decent, I'd say, because they just don't sell well. They haven't sold well. You look at the Xbox One, it was absolutely terrible. So the report says a total of 2.3 million consoles have been sold in Japan as of February 6th, 2022. So it'll be a little bit higher now. And the vast majority of these were the Xbox 360 sales, which were 1.6 million. 360 did pretty well in Japan when it came out for a console that was only within its second generation, didn't have any sort of foothold in that region. And we look here at the actual total numbers for each generation, the original Xbox 472,000, Xbox 360, 1.6 million, Xbox One 114,000. And right now the Xbox Series X and S has already surpassed the Xbox One era at 142,000. And honestly, if Xbox continues to try to grow in Japan, continues to get more JRPGs, Japanese style games within their services. I could see the Xbox Series X and S hitting that 1 million mark plus by the end of this generation. And we'll see what happens. I mean, they're trying to do that. We know the cloud and their subscription model is really what they're trying to push over there and trying to push pretty much everywhere. That's more important to them, their subscriber numbers. But in terms of physical console sales, I could see them doing significantly better this gen and closer to what they did with the Xbox 360. Now, we also got some more numbers on the best selling Xbox games in Japan in the last 20 years. And the best selling game was Dead or Alive 3 on the original Xbox, followed by Star Ocean 4, Tales of Asperia, Blue Dragon, and The Last Remnant. Again, look, all Japanese style games, all JRPGs pretty much, except for Dead or Alive 3, which is a great fighting game. To get more of these styles of games on the platform, it will definitely get out there and sell more. Okay, finally, I want to talk about a game that I don't know if too many people care about. It's been getting absolutely terrible reviews. It's a game when they first showed off, looked like it was going to be great, and then they completely did a 180 on it, changed like the graphic style and I think like the overall look of the game. And it comes from Platinum. It's published by Square Enix, and that's Babylon's Fall, which is a cooperative action RPG that just recently released. And like I said, is not getting very good reviews, but it is right now a PlayStation console exclusive for the PS5 and the PS4. Now, if you're interested in wondering if this game is going to be coming to Xbox, it looks like it's still maybe making its way over at some point. As at the end of the trailer here on the screen, it says also available on PC, and not available on other consoles until at least September 2nd, 2022. And I'm assuming they're gonna to wanna to get this game out on other consoles when this timed exclusive deal is over. Who knows how well this game is going to sell? I would assume it's not gonna do that great from the critical reception of it. And just didn't seem like there was that much lead up hype or marketing towards it and probably because they knew it wasn't such a great game. So I'm assuming they're gonna to wanna to try to push this out to more platforms once this timed exclusive deal is over. Probably a great game for Platinum if they want to get more people to play it, to put onto Xbox Game Pass at some point. That's it for me, guys. What are your thoughts on Activision, the Elden Ring sales, Babylon's Fall, and Xbox in Japan? If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. You're new here. You enjoyed what you saw. You found it entertaining or informative. Please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support, and I'll catch you in the next video.